Hi and welcome back to another video on Waveform. In this video I'm using 11.5, that version. This also applies to all of the editions, the free, the OEM, and the pro versions. And today I'm talking about plug-in sandboxing. I want to clarify what it is and also how to use it. Because it's not something you can really see, but there is a best way to set it up, and I want to demonstrate that in this video. So I'm going to go to the Settings tab and the Plugins page, which is where we can enable or disable plugin sandboxing. So the feature is enabled right down here at the bottom. Simply enable plugin sandboxing. If you turn that on, it will turn on the sandboxing feature. And what that means is that each plugin will run in its own process. That means it's isolated from the main operation of the waveform. And therefore, if there's a problem or if it crashes, it doesn't have the effect of causing waveform itself to crash. Waveform will report that it happened and it will recover naturally. Now you can selectively enable this sandboxing for different plugins. By default, when you first turn it on, you'll see this column right here means that sandboxing is enabled for everything with this check mark. Well, sandboxing has good side and downside. One, it protects your project or your edit from crashing so that you lose something. The downside is it uses more CPU. And also because plugins that are sandboxed are actually like running a separate program. I'm just gonna load this one here called LoudMax. You'll see it has a side effect that they, they tend to stay on the screen and do their own thing separately. So even if I change to the settings tab, you'll see that its UI stays on top. So how do you decide if you want to run sandboxing or not? Well, the best practice, at least at the time I'm writing this, is to enable plugin sandboxing, but only use it on plugins that you don't fully trust. And I'm going to give you an idea of how to tell if you could trust a plugin or not, and that is through the validation features right here, which you may not have noticed or you may never have used, but we have the ability to select and validate individual plugins. So once you enable sandboxing, you probably want to restart Waveform. It does tell you, it gives you a message that you need to at least restart or close and reopen any edits that you had open for the sandboxing to take effect. So I've already done that. The next step is to go into your plugin list and do Command A, which would be Control A on a PC. And in the sandboxing column, click to clear all of them. So now we're starting with sandboxing enabled, but none of our plugins are in that sandbox. And then we'll find specific plugins that we want to put in there. Now back on this page, I showed you this LoudMax. LoudMax is a free plugin by an independent developer that works as a kind of a mastering limiter. I find it works actually pretty good. I don't really know anything about the developer and I don't know if I can trust it. It's not like I've had problems with it, but this is an example of a program I would probably want a sandbox. So here I'll just type loud. So I have an audio unit version of LoudMax and a VST version of LoudMax installed on my system. So I'm going to click in that column and now I've enabled sandboxing for that plugin. Now, as I look through all of my plugins, you'll see I have a tremendous amount of plugins by Waves and Sugarbytes. I've got various things like the uh, Mach Wave Razor, things from Personas. That's from a different manufacturer's DAW. So maybe I wonder, well, I wonder if this will work properly or if I trust it. I could enable sandboxing or I could just validate it. So there's a built-in version of the plugin val validator right inside Waveform. So you make your selection here in the plugin list, and then right down here it says validate selected. So when I click that, you'll see it starts the plugin, it's going to exercise it through all of its controls, and then it gives us a report. And if you scan down, you can see that all tests passed, all tests completed successfully, and you can see all of the individual kinds of tests that it was run through, including 
trying it at various sample rates. So this plugin probably will not be a problem. I wouldn't put this in the sandbox. I have other things from Native Instruments, Valhalla. These effects I use all the time. I don't have trouble with them. If you wonder if maybe that manufacturer might have trouble, like we can try Supermassive and validate that. It runs through all the controls. And then at the end, if you scan through here, you've got a report. All the tests were passed and completed. Now I do have some that don't pass this test that I still occasionally want to use. And those are prime examples of things that you might want to enable the sandboxing for. One of them is this one from Plog S Forzando, like Sforzando. This is a sound font player. And every once in a while, I need to play a synth that uses a sound font. And if I validate this, you'll see that it fails the validation. This one, I definitely want to turn on the sandboxing for. So when I use it, I know that there's something maybe not quite up to date. Maybe I even have an older version that I might want to go and see if there's an updated version of this. Or I can run this, validate selected, and you'll see on this validation page, I can either copy all of this report to the clipboard or save it to a file. So this gives you the ability to send this report to the plugin manufacturer so they can improve their adherence to the standards for the different kinds of plugin interfaces. You can also send this information to traction support to help with working out this sort of thing. The bottom line is that it's probably a good idea to sandbox plugins that were free from unknown developers or plugins that are older or that you know might have some trouble, ones that don't pass validation. Major plugins that you frequently use, probably not necessary to put them in the sandbox. You get the benefit of less CPU overhead and the issue with the user interfaces staying open and staying on top of everything else. So a couple others that I leave in the sandbox is one is OTT or OTT from X for Records. It's a really cool multiband compressor maximizer kind of a thing. Let's try to validate this. In the past, this does not pass validation. See, it crashes validation, but it's something that I actually want to be able to use. So I'll put that in the sandbox. Now, one more thing I want to point out is that Waves plugins related to the validation, if you select one, which I wouldn't recommend trying this, but if you select a plugin and start to run the validation, it will validate every single one of the files because they're all in the same wave shell file. It will take a good long time to get through validation if you try to run validation on a Waves plugin. So that's just something to be aware of. Also, if you have a plugin that won't even load, then you can validate the file directly because it won't even be in this list. You could go into validation and just find the one that you want to validate by its file. I just went into my VST folder here. For example, I want to validate bias effects. Then I'll just click here and I can do the validation starting from the file. And bias effects passes validation with no trouble. And that's probably not one that I would feel like I need to run in the sandbox anyway. But I'm just showing you there's an example of you can actually use validate file to open the individual plugin file and run the validation there. So the bottom line is that if you're running all plugins that are from well-known manufacturers, you use them frequently, and they're not causing you any trouble, you could disable plugin sandboxing and save some CPU. If you want to run in a typical system like mine where I've got some very well-known, well-tested and trusted plugins, but a few that are free or from unknown developers or that are known to have problems, you can just selectively turn those on and enable plugin sandbox. You could see that I've got just a handful of them that are actually checked in that column. 
but the vast majority of the plugins I don't use plugin sandboxing with, and I have a lot of plugins here. So I realize this is one of the more technical features of Waveform, but I hope this video helps simplify it and gives you some direction on how to use plugin sandboxing in the best way for your setup. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video very soon.